Okay, team. So, so far in this series of questions, we have looked at uh, word, these ideas involving word identification, and we've actually looked at scenarios uh, that you could promote and help a student in each of these areas. Like right now, we haven't done all of them, but we've done high frequency sight word vocabulary and, and, and phonics and structural word analysis and syllabication. And we're about to right now talk about context clues and look at a strategy for context clues. So first, let's talk about context clues. There's a definition here for context clues, but I kind of, um, I'd like to modify this. I like to say that context clues are, um, rather than, I'd like to say they're surrounding words in a sentence uh, and not uh, that help a, a reader identify an unknown word. So I totally uh, changed the definition here. Context clues are surrounding words in a sentence. So they're words within a sentence or even a passage, but let's just say on a sentence level, context clues are surrounding words in a sentence that help a student identify an unknown word and pronounce it correctly. So that, and they also help you uh, self-correct a miscue. So it's not really about the meaning of a word. We're not gonna focus on the meaning aspect. We're gonna look at how context clues can help a student identify an unknown word or self-correct a miscue. Okay, so that's my definition of a context clue. And we're gonna look at two types. Uh, the first type of context clue or surrounding word that helps you identify uh, or surrounding, surrounding, maybe the better word is clue. A surrounding word or clue or um, um, a context clue is a surrounding word or clue in a sentence that helps us identify an unknown word and pronounce it correctly. We're gonna look at semantic context clues. And this is the sentence that's going to help us with the semantic context clue. That's the first one. Read it to yourself, please. Read this sentence to yourself. I'll turn myself off. You read it. Read it three times. It says here, uh, um, the student was supposed to read, check the local weather forecast. And then they stopped and they reread it. Because when they read it, they said, Check the local weather forest. And what happened when they said forest? Well, they said, check the local weather forest. And they're like, they're like, ding, ding, ding. That doesn't make any sense, right? So when a student makes a miscue and they can hear, they, they, and they're like, ding, 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 it doesn't make any sense. Forest, local forest doesn't make any sense. Local weather force doesn't make any sense. When the miscue doesn't make sense, yes? Then the student goes back and they look for uh, context clues or semantic context clues that make sense of the miscue. So local, uh, local weather force makes no sense, but local weather forecast does, right? So in this case here, the student used a semantic context clues or surrounding words that help us make sense of the miscue to correctly, ident to correctly identify the right word for a uh, forest, right? So when a student self-corrects, they, they could be using a lot of different strategies for self-correcting, but usually when you see this and then they reread it and read it correctly, not always, but that C means that they self-corrected, and not always, um, but a lot of times when they self-correct, they're going back, they're rereading it, and they're looking for surrounding words that help them in this case, make sense of a miscue. And when, the, when they're looking for words that help you make sense of a miscue, we call that a semantic context clue. So local weather would be an example of a semantic context clue. Now, let me give an example of a syntactical context clue. That's the second type of context clue. If I said um, um, two uh, boys uh, go for a walk, Two boys go for a walk. Two boys go for a walk. And instead of saying boys with an S, I say two boy go for a walk. Now imagine if a student read it like that. Two boy go for a walk. Ding, ding, ding. This time it's a ding, ding, ding. Two boy. And it's not that it doesn't make sense. This time it's ding, ding, ding. It doesn't sound right. Do you understand the difference? Check the local weather forest doesn't make sense. Two boy go to the go go for a walk doesn't sound right. So when it doesn't sound right, they go and they look for a syntactical clue or grammar clues, like the S on boys or the two. 
So these are examples of grammatical clues or syntactical clues. And when a student self-corrects a uh, syntactical error or grammatical error, so they say two boy go, you know, two boy, uh-oh, doesn't sound right, two boys, what they're doing is using syntactical context clues to self-correct. Woo! That's a lot of work. So basically, team, semantic context clues are the surrounding words that help us make sense of a miscue. And syntactical context clues are grammatical clues in a sentence that help us uh, sound out a correctly a grammatical mistake in the pronunciation or, or omitting of a sound in a word, right? Two different ways to self-correct. Okay, with that understanding and thinking about context clues, everyone take a moment and uh, look at these ones right here. This is actually a, from an activity involving context clues where the teacher would take a... Uh, a piece of paper, right? And with that piece of paper, they're going to cover up these words. And what they're going to do is they're going to have the students with just like only the first letter practice uh, context clues. Here's how it works. The teacher covers up the whole word except for the first letter. And then the, teacher, the student reads the sentence, Paul likes to play F. And they got to be like, hmm, what could that word be? What would, well, Paul might play, what could they play? They might play, oh, football. Play becomes a semantic context clue. Or this one right here. Blank are the largest land animals. Well, what could that word be? Um, what, what, well, largest land animals is a semantic context clue that help us, helps us get to elephant, right? Or this one right here. I went to the blank last Friday. Hmm, what could that be? Uh, well, where would you go on a Friday? Well, well, after the pandemic, not many people are going to the mall. But, you know, pre-pandemic, the mall or maybe the, the movies. Remember when you used to go to the movies on a Friday? That might be last Friday would be that semantic context clue, right? So, team, this is an activity uh, to just practice using surrounding words and grammatical clues as hints uh, to correctly identify an unknown word.